A very warm welcome to Out of Your League, episode eight, where Mark, this week we are live at Old Trafford, which is where you're going to be playing in the middle of October, isn't Fingers it? Fingers crossed, In yep. the grand final, That'd we're here lovely. for the, uh, the playoffs media day. Yep. It's quite loud, isn't it? Pardon? Very loud. Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> very good. Um, look who we're joined by, Jackson Hastings. Hi, Jackson. Jackson. Jackson, we were supposed to have you on a few weeks ago and you went away on holiday. Um, but we got you now. Yeah, We've I was late inclusion on a holiday, so <laughs> I'm pleased to be on. Mate, what, what about this place? This is what it's all about, isn't it? Old Trafford? Yeah, definitely. Getting a taste for it? Yeah, definitely. This is what you work so hard in the pre-season for. Um, us as a group, we rode on a whiteboard at the start of the year. I'm sure Flash will remember um, we want to win something. Um, we got knocked out of the Challenge Cup really early, which was disappointing. And um, obviously at the back end of the year, we went on an eight-win eight win streak. So we've got ourselves in a position now where we can have two bites of the cherry if need be to try and get to Old Trafford. We said to Mark last week, and I think even he tried to give a sensible answer, but there's absolutely no way, is there, that you thought you would be in this position at this stage? Uh, yeah, yeah you, on, you always want to say you expect to get here, but obviously um, when you look around the league and you look at the quality of players in every other team and the facilities they have, the money they got to spend compared to obviously us, London and teams like that, it is a long shot. It definitely is a long shot, but what we do have in our team are, are really good leaders. I've mm -hmm. always said that all the way along. Like, Mark's won it, um, Lee's won it, we've got boys that have won Challenge Cup, so we've got the pedigree there, it's just everyone had to bu uh, buy in and do their bit for the team, and I think over the last eight weeks in particular, mm -hmm. everyone's nailed their role, and we've put ourselves into third and given ourselves a, a chance to play at Old Trafford. You say Mark's uh, uh, one of the leaders, he, he's probably, he, so, he told me, a good friend of his, he told me, yeah, I'm going to be captain this year, this was a couple of seasons ago, I'm going to be captain, I was like, oh wow, it's awesome, but it's only sort of tran transpired over no, no, no. I've always, said, I've always said for the last couple of years with two captains, Lee Mossop and myself, we're core captains. But, but, I'm, but I'm fully aware yeah. that yeah. the boss, Ian Watson, is considers. He's actually behind us there. He, he considers Moose, Lee Mossop, 51%, and I'm like the 49. <laughs> he just kind of edges it. So, media days like this, any kind of captain responsibility, anything really important, yeah. he always pulls Lee out and then he just pushes me to one side. Is that what it feels like, a sort of 40% captaincy role from Flanagan? <laughs> No, nah, I think that they're, they're on the same level. Flash does all the tosses anyway, so I think that means you're actually number one. <laughs> tosses so. the coin. Yeah, you toss the, the coin up. Yeah. Just keep your mouth shut, but just toss yeah, the coin. Yeah, yeah. He's never won one. Keep him happy. He's never won a toss, though. He'll, he'll you toss never the won a coin toss. and then keep him happy. Never won a toss, is that right? Oh, yeah, a few. I've won a few. One, one in 29 yeah, games one in 29 isn't bad. I've a couple. <laughs> but, I mean, what a story this would be. This would be the, the Leicester City football story, if you guys can do this. Soccer. There's no, there's yeah, no, yeah. There's no reason that you can't. At least get to the final, is there? It's it's crazy. Like to to say that we'll be sitting here talking about this as as we it's just touched madness. on. It's it is mad, and um, I think we're probably the. If you look at it, we're probably the best soccer team in, in history. Really, mm -hmm. I know we haven't won anything, but if you look at all the records that we've been able to break as a team, I think most away wins, highest finish, most points in a year, mm. most consecutive wins, stuff like that. I think it's pretty remarkable what we've been able to do. And, Mate, we just got a team that's just got to keep believing in ourselves. We go to Wigan, probably the hardest test. Wigan at Wigan on a Friday night too. So if we can get a win up there, the world choice, the sort yeah. of thing, you know what I mean? Well, I know you said it's a lot of it's down to leaders and so on, but then you, you often see this in, particularly in rugby league, and you've seen it with the, the Leeds teams over the years where they've gone from scrapping around and just about staying in the league, which is what you guys did last yeah. season, to being right in the mix. Yeah. Why, why is this such a drastic difference, do you think? What's that, what's that drastic difference been for you guys? Well, we've obviously brought a bit of class in. If you look at our two wingers now, um, Kenny Seo, Chris and Inu, they're two big signings. I think Gil Dudson's probably been the biggest signing of everyone we've made. Uh, a lot of people screwed their face up at, at Gil's signing, and to be fair, I didn't know too much about him, but he's come in and has probably been our most consistent player every single week. He, he probably doesn't get the portents that um, us outside backs get because we score the try, I set him up, but the amount of work that Gil gets through along, alongside Moose and the other forwards in our team is remarkable and it sets the platform from Niall, myself, Joey, Logan, um, Tui, Robbie, we was here to get on the front foot and play some footy. Mm. So I know the outsiders looking in and see uh, myself and the other halves dictate the game, but without our middles, the older heads, honestly, like Flash and Berkey, all the boys that don't get any reward off, off the fans, without them, you know, we wouldn't be in the position we are. I think I've said it in the podcast a few times, we're a really well balanced side now. I think we share the workload out really well. So. Games are getting quicker, the, the, the speed of, of which we run at is a lot quicker, but we, we level out the playing field in terms of how much work our outside backs do, carrying the ball forward, which means that our, our forwards and our middles get a bit of a breather in, in attack, so then when we're defending, we can put lots of energy into massive line speed, getting three, three blocks into a tackle, loads of wrestle, so all, all the effort 
aspects of the game is shared equally along the 17 and it just means that we're at times a very workmanlike team but we're high on energy and our attitude is second to none in terms of any other team in the league so I think when we've, you've got bits of class like Jacko and Inu and Tui Lola here who can, can, can take you to the next level when you get opportunities as long as you've got that attitude and that work ethic you set yourself up for, for success. How weird is this for you though going to a team where you're going to be playing next season? Yeah, oh, it's a bit odd, um, I suppose. I get asked the question all the time, are you excited for next year? And my answer's always the same. And my whole sole focus has been on Salford. Um, you know, I knew what I was going to do um, a couple of weeks before it obviously got announced and things like that. And you read things about yourself saying, oh, he, he won't care no more, he's going to Wigan, he's doing this, he's doing that. But I've said it a million times that um, without the club I'm at now, I, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. I don't even know if I'd be playing professional sport anymore. So I'm extremely grateful for the club for the chance they've given me. And, I said all along I want to repay him for a full season. I re-signed at the end of last year and um, to be sitting here, it's just, it's just so crazy that we're yeah. able to talk that we could be walking out of Old Trafford and I think that the playing group that we've got really deserves it and I know that um, you know Friday night's a big test but uh, we're the team to do it, I think. Did you think when you came over from the NRL that this was a kind of, not final chance because you're so young, but you had to, to grasp this opportunity when you came over to, to make the name for yourself that you have done now? No, I did think it was a final chest. Um, you know, as I said, there was days and, and nights definitely um, after the Manly scenario that I thought my career was over. Um, like, I was on the back page of the biggest paper in Sydney 19 days in a row. My granddad's got every single clipping. Um, it was embarrassing. It was belittling. Um, my mum was crying on the phone to me every night. It's not, it's not a very nice, nice thing to do to your family. And I felt like I let not only myself down, but my family down. Um, Especially my mum, no one likes seeing their mum cry. Um, mm -hmm. My mum's done everything for me. I'm um, a single parent of three kids and um, to see me or make me feel like I've let her down was probably the most disappointing thing out of it all. And I promised her when I come over here that I'd never do that again. I spoke about it the other day. I wear this wristband that says I promise. And it's just a, it might be a bit corny, but it's just a little reminder to myself to never let myself or my family down ever again. And um, yeah, I'm just really glad that it's turned out okay for me and that I've been able to um, to win some fans over. Has that been a big part of the motivation then? You know, sort of telling yourself I need to grow up and yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it wasn't always um, stuff around training or anything like that that let me down. It was just poor decisions. Um, mm. You're you know, a young lad though. Yeah. Everyone does that, don't they? I, got, in, I got, got put into first grade pretty early on and I was surrounded by superstars and um, I was very immature in the head and, and made a lot of wrong comments and, and did a lot of dumb things that I, that I really regret. And then it sort of filtered on to the, to the following club I was at and um, I found myself on a plane over to the other side of the world um, pretty quickly and I just realised that you only get one chance at playing professional sport, mate, and I never wanted to let that slip ever again. Mm. Have you noticed that when, it, when he's come in, how much he's changed over the last sort of year or so? Well, we knew the headlines that, that came with Jackson when he first signed, but I think we, as a playing squad, gave him benefit of doubt and a, and a clean slate and, you know, since then he's, he's been, been great for the, for the club and, you know, when you see him on the field putting the efforts in that he does, he's made, made cover tackles, He's not afraid to put his body on the line for us, and you know, for a teammate, that's all you want, and he does it every week, so you can't complain at all. Mate, you might be leaving the Super League champions for the team who finished third. <laughs> so, oh, it's just it's a it's a weird way the so world works. It's quite convoluted the actual structure, isn't it? Have you got your head around it? Can, yeah. you, can you explain it to someone in 20 seconds? No, I don't think I could. <laughs> it's a, it's, you've actually got me thinking here. I don't even know what to say back, but. It's, it's, it's just the way the, it's worked out and um, we've got to play Wigan on Friday night and I'll be there next year, but I'm softer now, so that's my main focus. In general then, the, the, the move, um, how has that been cha changing countries, the style, the different type of rugby? Yeah. You seem to have settled into, we, we see you around, knocking around in those coffee shops at Joey Lussick, yeah. chatting up the, the bar, not anymore. Yeah, got, yeah. Which is your favourite coffee shop? Just incidentally. Yeah, PKB is not too bad. Yeah, the one. Yeah. Spinning fields. Uh, Grind, uh, Grind, you mean Grindspin? Yeah, no. Grindspin, yeah, yeah. Media City, isn't it? <laughs> 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 no, nah, but the style of play, the style of play is different. Drastically um, different. Try, try and put your head. Yeah, I think I think the Super League's a lot more attack fo focused, and I know mm. a lot of clubs will say they work on their defence, and every club does. We work hard on it as well. But I, f I feel like when you're out there, there's a lot more space, or you you feel like there's a lot more space. Whereas mm. back in the NRL, they're so focused on the wrestle, Titan and the ruck, and all the little things like that. But in saying that, there's a lot less pressure over here in terms of the media and things like that. You you don't have to worry about every little movement you do, you can sort of take a step back, breathe and, and actually live your life. I suppose it's like comparing it, Mark knows, Mark's been over there, it's like comparing it to a Premier League football almost, not as protected and, and hidden away from the, from the cameras and that, but that's the sort of 
stool you sort of sat on when you play in our row over there, so it's mm. completely different. Yeah, Blake Austin was saying a similar sort of thing, saying that it's just so much more fast paced, not the game, just that everything that goes around the game as well in Australia as it is yeah, compared to here. Yeah, it's quick, mate. And there's so much put on every game in Australia, whereas obviously there's two or three games televised over here a week. Not every mm. game's televised too. So that's completely different. It, um, when you get a televised game over here, it's a bit of a big deal and all the boys get the fresh haircuts and things like that. Whereas back home, it's just every minute detail of a game's picked apart just through the media and that's every game sort of televised nationally and, and globally. So yeah. you can't put a foot wrong. And, and once you put a foot wrong, the media get onto it and then they just hammer you. So that's the completely different It's story. a fantasy season for you though, really, isn't it? I know it's not finished yet and there could be a, a great story at the end of it, but in the dream team as well. Yeah, that's a big honour, mate. Obviously, you don't, you don't play to, to make teams like that. You play to be sat here and, and be competing for this trophy behind us. And um, to get the recognition is nice, but it'll mean nothing to me if we, if we just bow out in straight sets. You know, I wanna, I wanna hopefully be a part of a, a special season for Salford and ultimately living this trophy behind us. So uh, that's the main goal. But as I said, yeah, it's, it's always nice to get a little bit of recognition. I don't think we can keep you much longer because everyone wants a slice of you. You would have thought that eh? a couple of years ago. People are queuing up for Hastings. They want, they want a piece of you. Yeah, they're usually but, queuing up to write bad stories about me. So <laughs> is that what it was? Yeah. Have you not had any bad ones so far? No one's, no one's written anything negative? Over we, here, can, we could start something. Over here, no, we please could, don't. Touch stories, wood, I, I want to stay cool. No, I don't think so. No. If I if I tell one on him, he'll tell one on me. So oh, yeah. we'll just I've leave. I've got it. a few flash there. Have you? Yeah. We'll is leave. It. This is is this the platform for that? <laughs> no, no. Should no, we no, save no. it to like too. Let's save that to. I've got even more yeah, stories on you. So we'll just you we'll all be friends. Uh, well, look. Best of luck, mate. Congratulations you, mate. on getting the dream team. Appreciate it. Um, best of luck at Wigan as well. If you don't see before yeah, then. Cheers, man. Appreciate it. Grand final. I'll be here. I said I'll get a Mark Flanagan tattoo if you guys win the grand final. So right on my forehead. Yeah. How good. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, mate. Appreciate it, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, Mark, 1955. Yep. Why do I want to talk about 1955? I'll, I'll tell you why. Well, in fact, let me tell you more about the year 1955. Uh, the first Guinness Book of Records came out. Disneyland opened. Uh, the war in Vietnam begun. Rosa Parks was arrested after refusing to give up her bus seat on the, the bus to a white passenger in Alabama. McDonald's began. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Whoopi Goldberg were born. My old schoolmate, uh, Sir Winston, don't look at my notes. So Winston Churchill uh, was born, uh, was, it, was Prime Minister, wasn't born, that would be ridiculous. And uh, Bird's Eye came up with fish fingers as well. However, it was also the year that Warrington last won a league title. A long time ago. Uh, and who are we going to blame for that? Well, let's blame Tom Lynham and Blake Austin. You can come in and explain why it's taken so long, guys. What did you say? Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I was distracted because I saw an old... Um, an old Tom? person I used to work with. Who's gone? Who did he used Matt. to work with? You know you need to speak into the microphone. Oh, sorry. He was at all FC before, but now he's at Castleford. And okay. He saw me and I got eye contact with him, but then he pretended he'd not seen me and just walked past. <laughs> that. Tom could probably tell that. you a few more things about 1955 <laughs> Go on, too. I've not got any stats actually about in 1955. Not Do you want to lean back before we'll my time. Sorry, before him, was it? Sorry, oh, I forgot Mark was here. But I did actually miss the original question. So a lot of things happened in 1955. Yeah. One of which was Warrington last won the league. So we're just oh. making a point. It's a long time oh, ago. I see. To blame us for, for yeah. not, for not oh, winning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's Blake's first, first season, so it's yeah. not his fault. <laughs> and no one really knew Tom before this season. Like, it was a joke, was it? It's <laughs> always a sign of a good joke when you have to explain it afterwards. <laughs> to you, I think we might yeah. explain it. You've got to be careful with you, mate. <laughs> um, how are you doing? You all right? Very well, thank you. Very nice well. little day, this isn't it? You've read it is. <laughs> well, because we, we thought we were going to be in a little quiet room. I know, so did we. We are actually going on here, in amongst it? it. Just set the scene for us, Tom, if you yeah, can. I feel for like all those people cent listening and watching stage. around the world. What kind of what kind of room? How do you describe this sort of setting um, room? Cluttered. <laughs> cluttered. Quite messy. Wires and adapters everywhere. Yeah. Lots of people taking pictures. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's all it's all going on, isn't it? Yeah. Um, how you how you boys feeling going into the playoffs? The results haven't been great, have they? No, they haven't. Obviously, um, you know, some ordinary result, results with a, um, you know, a, a wonderful victory at Wembley. It's sort of there in the middle. So um, I know I wasn't a part of that, but um, the boys will take a lot of confidence out of that. Obviously, St. Helens were sort of considered untouchable for, for such a long time. And for us to be able to go to Wembley and do what we've done there, it's, it's obviously given us a lot of confidence. But, um, you know, our form in the league in the last probably six to eight weeks hasn't hasn't quite been where it needed to be so um, but in saying that we weren't very good leading into Wembley so 
we understand that we can turn it around when, when we need to, and um, that's what we'll, we'll be planning on doing this week. Mm. And a couple of defeats off this idiot here. Am I right? Mate, yeah. yeah, can't the, beat them this year. They're the, yeah, the only team we've not beaten. Um, um, what, what do you make of the Salford story? Brilliant. They do, they do unbelievably well. They play a really good brand of rugby. Um, Attacking threats all over the field. That you know their spine that they've uh, they got together. Obviously, with losing Robert Louis halfway through the season, mm. um, it hasn't seemed to really affect them. You know they've really kicked on, and when you're playing against them, they, they can score from anywhere. They're, they're very fast team, and yeah, we've we've massively struggled against them. Obviously, we've um, we've had wins against every other team bar Salford. Mm. So hopefully, we can. Well, we did that with St Helens, obviously in the league, lost all three to managed to beat them in the cup. So. Obviously, Salford, they've got the um, finished third in the end, pipped us to that. So, if we meet again, hopefully, in knockout rugby, you know, yeah. fortune will favour us. But, like you and Blake have just said, in the middle of those poor results was that win over St Helens. And psychologically, that's huge, isn't it? If you are to meet in the grand final, that's knowing that you've beaten them quite recently. And yeah, not many obviously, have. last year as well, um, we, did, we lost to them every game in the league format and then in the semi final managed to get the win done that again this year with the Challenge Cup and you no know, we do have a good record um, in, in knockout rugby we've not see last year we made all major finals obviously didn't get the wins and then this year made the final again so we, we do play our best brand of rugby when it you know when I reckon that's an experience as well because Warrington would have been in the mix for the last five ten years so they're used to them big games so when it comes around they know they can switch it on whereas probably an obstacle we've got to overcome at Salford is we've not been in those kind of matches. We're really fresh, so we've got some lads who've been there, but as a team, we've never been in those kind of big, high-pressure environments. Whereas Warrington have, have shown that they're a threat because they can just turn it on when, when they need to. So I think they've been interesting. there was definitely a lot of talk of that leading into Wembley. I think you know we we wanted to back our experience. We we know that not many of the St Helens boys have been on that stage before, and um, you know I think it went a long way to to winning at Wembley. Obviously, it's. It's scary to head in and to say that we're just going to turn it on in, in the big games. It's certainly not ideal where we're at, but um, we are where we are and, and we're still very confident we can uh, you know, make a, make a real run for the, for the championship. What's life like in England for you, mate? Coming over here, there's lots we want to talk about. What, um, um, I, I, I describe it to the people back home as just a bit more cruisy. I think you know, the game back home ooh, is, um, ooh. is so scrutinised and... Um, we're certainly not on the level that football is in in this country, but we're a lot closer to football than we are to probably rugby in this country. Where you know Mark spent a bit of time at the, the, the Tigers, you'd probably understand what what the bubble of Sydney can be like. And um, you know I've come over here um, for a to quiet give, life <laughs> to give it my all. Obviously, I, I'm coming over here for for what I believe is all the right reasons. I'm, uh, my kids have settled really well, and uh, things things are going really well. Yeah, and and uh, when you did come over, you brought twenty thousand pounds worth of trainers with you. Uh, Twenty thousand pounds was exaggerated looking, a little bit. You never let the I'm truth get away. Good now. story, mate. How would you describe Blake's um, Smart. footwear today? Uh, let's talk about Tom shorts if we want to talk about anything. Yeah, actually, no, but you've got. Is, uh, it, would you say is it a fetish? You've got a train of uh, fetish. Yeah, Fantastic. I'm obviously getting a bit older now, and I've got four kids, so um, I do have to grow up a little bit in that department. And um, invest it wisely, don't you? Justifying use. spending a lot of money on things like that. Is Where did it. that start, though? That was it. Just a little collection that just built and built and built. I just always liked shoes. Yeah, I grew up as a kid that. Um, probably couldn't always afford the shoes that I wanted to wear and um, always had the goal to make sure I could sort of earn enough money in a sense to, to be able to wear the shoes that I want to wear in a way. And, but there must yeah. be ones that you wear and you sort of walk, you know, you just have a little walk down the street and then, you know, like a van comes past, splashes you or you walk in a puddle or something and you've just defaced. Nah, nah I'm not quite like 10, that. I think if, worth. you know, if you're... If you're that worried about your shoes getting dirty, you you, you probably can't afford the shoes in the so first place. So what's the so. naughtiest, what's the most rascal pair you got in that the collection? Most, what? What's the, the most, most expensive? The most rascal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's the most rascal? The most expensive, if we want. Yeah. Yeah. What what How much have you yeah. spent, you rascal? Me, yeah. How much have you spent on a pair of, sh on a shoe yeah. uh, before? Uh, it was a couple of grand Australian on a pair of Louboutins. Um, they've got a red bottom, so that's why they're synonymous. Obviously, it's underneath, so you don't even see it. But um, as I said, I'm... <laughs> I'm 28 now, so obviously you... you Does it stop this now? Have you stopped buying It's it? gone a long way to stopping, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm, and I'm sort of even preaching around training that it's, um, you know, it's it's great while you've got it, but, you know, life after footy is, is pretty important as well, so... So basically you need your kids, one of them, to be a sort of size 12 for them exactly. to get their yeah, inheritance. Well, I've only got one son, so I, I, I'm hoping that he's a, 
And it's sort of like an heirloom. It sounds a bit silly and people hand watches and things like that down. Yeah. But I'd love to one day say that, son, all, all these shoes are yours and, and off you go. And fashion goes around in cycles. So I'm sure they'll be, uh, they'll be really cool again one day. Um, Tom, look into my eyes. I think we're, we're, you know, despite getting off on the wrong foot, which I tend to do with a lot of people. He really rattled sure. you there. I, 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 did, I yeah. noticed that, yeah. yeah I wasn't but sure he can do that, was, Tom. He, we're yeah. trying to phase each other. It's nothing personal, though. We're not trying to show whether it was sort of whether who phased no, who. I don't think he likes you. No. I don't think he does. Yeah. No, I, I, do you? You're indifferent. Yeah, All right, Stephen. <laughs> How uh, are we? Mark, you just Good describe what's happening here. Uh, the coach is hitting the player. Steve yeah, Price has uh, struck his own player. He's uh, very aggressive. The coach is the only person that can get Tom actually quite nervous. Yeah, so that was quite weird. Anyone, no one else can rattle him. You, you're blushing, yeah, Tom. I disagree with that. No, he's just... He struck you obviously there. And you actually, I think you've, some of your skin has been... No, uh, he's, he's, he's showing off for the camera. He's, <laughs> he's very different person. Very Australian, in front very brash. Yeah. Very brash. That was his go to. Like, oh, look at me. I'm on the camera. I'm hitting a player. Like a power play. But I'll take that. Um, he can stand on me to make himself feel tall, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that would be weird if he did stand on you, wouldn't it? Literally, yeah, it would. Yeah, it would be a figure of speech, isn't Metaphorically. it? Metaphorically. Um, so the reason I thought we were going to fall in love uh, over this sort of 20 minutes that we've got you uh, is because of Cynthia. Oh, wow. Now, um, Who's still, do you know about Cynthia? No, I don't know about Cynthia. Do you still live with Ryan Bailey? No, not, That's not long, anymore. No. Those days are gone. Yeah. yeah. We, we, when he was at Warrington, we lived together. But you do year. still live with Cynthia? Cynthia's still there, yes. Um, can you just explain to Mark who Cynthia is? Cynthia's a mannequin. Um, okay. I bought originally, I was about 20 years old when I got my first house in Hull. And um, so did, did I, I wanted a kind of like an ornament her? with a bit of difference, a bit of an edge. A sexy and ornament. Yeah, she's very, as mannequins come, she's, she's probably It's up, not up a there. sex toy, though. No, no, she's no, it's not it's nothing sexual. No, there she's are no orif orify. She's just a very pretty mannequin, like a top spec mannequin. Yeah, when slim, you curvy, talk slim, uh, brunette. Well, actually, obviously, you can change her hairstyle. She comes with earrings. She actually comes with two heads, brown eyes, blue eyes. You got both heads obviously, on at the same time. Obviously, you can top. move the arms all interlock, and that I got a nice stand. And she was an ornament to start with, a bit of a talking point. But now she's in the she's in the spare room. Is she clothed or? Yeah, she wears different outfits depending yeah. on. But she gets naked. Oh, depending yeah, on what she wants to wear. Dresser, yeah. Yeah. Um, and where does she live in, in your house? Where about? In the spare room. In the spare room. Yeah, she's Is that looked her over. Room? It's like uh, the dresser, well, obviously with the wardrobes, clothes, and then like the clothes rails. But she actually, I've positioned her. I'm, I struggle with my neighbours. They're, um, they're, they're not the most polite couple, and they argue like really bad, some very aggressive arguments they have and um, domestic violence is all knocking on the door yeah. yeah i've not actually heard them fighting as such but some of the stuff they say to each other you know just when you've got in and the it's a nice day so i'll open the back door and the scousers and the last thing you want to hear is just two scousers surprises me to hear that the know, scousers trying, to, trying to fight each other so does she keep so she's positioned there looking over there because i kind of want them to feel when they're in the garden a bit unsettled because yeah. they they irritate me with their arguments whilst i'm in the living room so then i want them to be like what what is that you know when they're in the garden make them you know just give them a little bit back of yeah. what i'm feeling yeah, yeah. that's good so um with, with this relationship with cynthia it's obviously there's an, obviously a big emotional attachment and you paid money for it at the beginning almost like a sex toy but it's but it's but it's grown into something deeper no not really it is just an ornament like um do you talk to her there's no emotion like really. yeah, like yeah, like yeah it is it's just a bit it's just a bit different how many people do you know with a mannequin just you exactly yeah. so and a few it's shopkeepers. not it's not there's no there's no real love or emotion like connection there it's just an yeah. ornament that i bought with a bit of an edge people yeah. like to talk about it does she get out and much no no she just remains there sometimes i bring her downstairs if i've got to do something yeah um Obviously, for the effect of maybe a video that someone's asked for or something like that, then I'll bring her, right. her down the house. You say she's downstairs. in the spare room. She's, she's stood up. She's, stayed, not, she's stood not in the bed. She's got a metal stand. She stands there like a legs yeah. cross at the bottom. Stands up very feminine, elegant pose. Just watching Blake's eyes for the last five minutes while Tom was telling that story was kind of... No, I've just watched it, Tom. It's been great. I think it's... It, like, people try and make jokes of it, and it yeah. you know, but Tom is very, very comfortable Attached. in... No, no. You know, I've been told also he has a... He has a framed picture of him and the head coach on his wall in his bedroom. I don't no, know. No. I don't know if there's it, any truth to that. It's not. It's not. I'm not in the picture. It's just him. Just him. Just Steve Price in the picture. kitchen. Yeah, it's about 12 um, pictures up, and it was his outfit. Right. And when I was getting some pictures, um, why well, the next girlfriend? And the, we, we there was a lot of couple pictures. And yeah. obviously, when when we sp split up, I had to replace them. And I was I don't take many pictures. So I had to, you know, think outside the box, and there was one that I had on my camera roll with a mad outfit that Steve was wearing, and I thought, you know what? 
it's going up. Yeah, that's up there. So when you mentioned girlfriends. When girls come round to the to the house, what do they make of Cynthia? Yeah, there's is a, there a jealousy there's, there. Yeah, they're normally it's like, what the, you know, yeah. is that? What are you doing with that? And then I sometimes I explain the story, and other times, you know, I can't really be bothered. But you know, it, it's an icebreaker, and obviously the element of surprise. But really, it's just it's just a unique ornament in the house. Mm. Would you say you're one of the weirder guys in the Warrington squad? Um, but that, that's not that. Like, you have to explain weird, that. Yeah. What, yeah. what is weird? We're all well, weird in our own way. Yeah. Tommy's it, very sure of himself. I think he met my, my parents flew over from Australia the other week, and he and he went and introduced himself to my parents, and he he informed them from the word go that I was his third favourite friend in the in the Warrington team. And, and who's, they, who's the top behind, two? Yeah, that's for Blake to decide. I just know I'm third. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Oh, you're third, third in his. I see. I'm his yeah, third. He said yeah. to my parents. Oh, he, right. said, he said you got a great son. He's my third best friend, and that sort of sums Tom up. You should never team. put yourself first. You know, let first and second battle out, and yeah. just take third spot. Okay, but so do you reckon he was about right. Bronze. I I I, I really like Tom. Obviously, we're a sport probably where everyone's a very similar sort of personality, and when you mm. like, he knows nothing. He knows sweet FA about rugby league, like. <laughs> He's a space cadet. Yeah. Really? You know what I mean? And, and he plays on that a bit because he knows a bit more than what he plays on, but he actually doesn't know much. And he's just happy to be here. And um, I think it's real refreshing to play with a guy like that. And Tom, how was your relationship with Deck Patton? Because after, oh, after there was a match during the season where you had a bit of a run in and you Everyone contemplated with Deck a little not bit. passing to him when he scored. And there was a bit of a backstory, wasn't there? Yeah, no. What, yeah, what I'd, well, obviously, I explained it in the interview, but it was. Um, it, it, we have two weights groups and I like to get these things called Tommy wins which is where obviously your timetable set out I like to get little wins with you know the conditions so we've got AD Gardner and uh, Chris Barron at the minute and I have a good relationship with them but you know I like to so if I'm in the, sec like yeah, I'm in the second group yeah. I like to you know get away with being in the first group like today we had this promo so we actually started at 1pm but I, um, I wanted to start at 12.40 I said I've got to go home get the dogs we'll take them out Toby King's looking after dogs, getting back to him, meet Blake and get Re to a promo. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was like, no, it's one o'clock, unless you ring Steve Price and he gives you permission, thinking I wouldn't ring him. And then I rung him, Steve, let me train early and it was one much easier. And then just I, little things like that. I think that. he drives home and giggles to himself that he that he was able to, to pull it off and, and start weights 20 minutes early. Like, that's the <laughs> you class. know, just little things that get you yes. through the day. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, well, you, I was just going to stand in the gym. He said that you can set you, like, your apparatus up but you can't start, you know, he, so he was trying to play on me. Just little battles like that. But deck pattern. But sorry, deck pattern, the original <laughs> question, sorry. <laughs> deck pattern, um, yeah, so what happened is I was meant to be in the second group and so was he, but I'd started in the first group, but no one had noticed and he came in and grasped, he grasped on me. On you. And it, it's just, I was I literally, yeah, so I had like two exercises left, so then they made me leave and I had to wait whatever half an hour to come back and do the two exercises. I was just like, deck. Good leadership from deck. Yeah. And that's what you need. But so obviously that was we played on it a bit for you know for the, the media. Obviously we got on very well. Yes, yeah, as you can. We're very good friends. Is he in well. your top two? He's deck in my top two. Um, yeah, mine mine switch and changes a lot depending on oh, you know. One yeah, of those. it's not yeah it's not a concept, like a fixed format. Um, like some people are always up there, but then some people. Who's at the out. bottom? Who's at the bottom of my? Do you know what the the, the best thing about Warrington is? Like, there's probably thirty blokes. And I and and you I like every one of them. Well, 28. There's probably two. Uh, who are those two? You don't know. Like, um, Can we name them? I don't want to out them. Yeah. You, in in front yeah. of it's no, close, I don't not like them. Close. One of them, he's, he's it's not him as a person. It's his personal hygiene. Right. And oh. it's, <laughs> <Come on. laughs> it's a young lad, and now nah, I won't say not names. It's not fair. But no, he'll know exactly. Who he he'll is. know who he'll he is know if exactly he watches this. <laughs> but no, I do. I do like everyone. Really, it's just. It's just hard when you're tired and that and someone sings, isn't it? <laughs> it's good for them to compete for your affection as well, isn't it? Always yeah, on the yeah. tours then, aren't they? Yeah, they, and they bring the best each day, don't they? Like, you, like to, you have your days, don't you? We've uh, come to the clue, what do we call Blake? Multifaceted, means he's got many different sides. Yeah. So that always makes it exciting, because each day you don't know which Blake you're going to get. It's good to explain what multifaceted yeah, means. Yeah, some people A lot of people don't probably know. don't know what that means. Um, Blake, you've played for Portugal. This is the most... Uh, is that not a good question? It's a great that? question. A great question. I can't do any sort of media without getting asked this question. Okay. This was blown way out. Like, this wasn't like a test match. Like, this was like 10... Like, we had 12 players and they all met at the gate. Mm. And my dad actually knew the coach. He went to school with him. And I was 16 at the time. And they said, do you want to come and play a game of, game of rugby league? 
And on the other team was a couple of uh, uh, sort of fringe NRL players. And I thought that this is a great chance for me to get out there and, and mix it with, with and, and sort of further my career. And in the end, it was actually really good for my development as a player. But like it wasn't a full on like people are saying I've played test matches for. You know, it's not what it was, mate. We, we played one game against Japan and they only sent over uh, like nine players. So four of our players had to join their team for the whole match. Like it wasn't, it wasn't a full-on thing. And Port Japan, mate. If if, Port if Japan. the blonde hair and the, the pale skin didn't give it away, mate, I'm I'm absolutely not Portuguese. And they were actually part Portuguese. No, not at all. Not nothing. So when I was at the Raiders, when I was at the Raiders, there was a young kid and he won a competition and he got to pick his favourite player and that player got to show him around the facilities. And we're we're doing the tour and. And the dad looks at the son, and the son was only about seven. He goes, go on, tell Blake why you picked him. And he said, Blake, I'm Portuguese too. And I said, oh, that's great, mate. Yeah, I had to go along with it. And a few minutes later on the tour, I had to pull the dad aside and say, listen, mate, I'm not, I'm sorry. To, I didn't want to break his heart, but I'm not Portuguese. I, I did play a few times for him. But um, so, yeah, I get asked everywhere I go, mate. And So that hasn't affected you going into the uh, England elite performance? Well, that's what the, the, the boys have brought that up. How can I be a... Uh, have played for Portugal and then and then switched to that. So, um, yeah. yeah, it has been brought up a lot, mate. So, and, and how much stick have you had then over the the English stuff? I mean, so so you're, is it your dad's mum? My mum's mum, yeah. Your mum's mum? Mum's mum. Mum's mum lived here till she was 10. Okay, Gra where's she from in England? Grandma. She, my grandma, <laughs> mum's yeah, mum, yeah. No, I was trying to work out which side. Yeah. Uh, she's in Twickenham, so she's... She's been adamant the whole time that she's always remembered her address. And we were like, yeah, yeah, no, like, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're kidding yourself. But we, we found all our paperwork and that recently we went through it all. We had to yeah. to, to change my allegiance. And um, to her credit, she, she was spot on um, at a house in Twickenham. We actually wanted to go see her not long back, but we, we didn't get around to her. But um, yeah, it's obviously my, um, my pride in representing England is probably going to be a bit different to everyone else's. Mm. Mine's solely based on representing my grandmother and, and the path that she's walked, and, and I'd certainly get plenty of pride out of that. Um, I'm living here in the country now. I, I plan to be here a while. I'm, um, I'm, I'm an ambassador for the sport in, in this country, and you know I'd love to really be, be given the opportunity. It's, I'm, I didn't put my hand up and say that um, you know, I want to be picked. I put my hand up to say that I'm, I'm here if, if needed, and um, I'd Are you love surprised the you got into that that quickly? Uh, am I? Oh, I'd back myself, yeah, to, to get a start for sure. So, am I? I don't know what kind of question that is, but no, surprised to be in that England squad as as quickly as you. No, you've well, been. as I said, I'll, I'll back myself to to contribute for sure. And yeah. um, as I said, it's it was never going to be my decision whether I'm selected or not. But um, extremely proud to to have been, yeah. But that move has worked out pretty well for you, isn't it, really, from Canberra? Because it was a stage in your life where you said you, ne you needed a change, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I think I was there for four years, obviously, you know, had a, had a real good couple of years and, and then mm. a, a couple of years that I, I probably struggled a little bit and um, which then, a, as things go, when you're not happy on the field, you, you can filter into your life off the field and um, I certainly needed something new and I probably didn't expect to be coming over here, but... Uh, when the chance come up, the, the longer I thought about it and the opportunity, it's uh, yeah, it's been great. And, and Warrington's been great. Um, I've got a wonderful partner. We, you know, we had to turn down a, a, a pretty strong offer from the Raiders for for my own happiness in that sense. And why is Tom laughing she, at you? This uh, look, Tom's um, as I said, Tom's not a rugby guy, so um, <laughs> Tom would be playing in the park if he if, if he didn't want to be. So. No, but I mean, that, you weren't just thinking about you, were you? Because how many kids have you got? Four kids, yeah. Four kids? Yeah, four. So we had to cart them all the way around the world. And obviously, you know, that's a big thing for them. Yeah. They're pretty... Uh, fertile. Hey? Pretty fertile. Mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not much to do down in Canberra, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, we pumped out a few babies, mate. Um, I'm really glad the way I've done it. I've, I've got an eight-year-old son that's been along a lot of my rugby league journey and... Um, yeah, we're all we're all here in, in England enjoying it. Yeah, was was Blake playing in the games against you this season, Mark? Yeah, nah. I've played against. I think I've played. I don't know. Don't know. Played against Tom. You can't remember. You can't remember. Blake. You might have played us at Penrith Stadium one game. No, you mean, did you mean over here? No, no, here, yes. Yeah, over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah over here. Yeah. You, you were in the, what years were you at the Panthers? Uh, I played a game in. I debuted in 2011. Played a bit in 2012. Yeah. I, I played the Tigers and, in 13. I was 10 and 11. So. Okay. Yeah. So no, I just mean it was around. The, the round when you had the injury around the Challenge Cup final time, I was wondering when, when the Salford oh, game was right, around that yeah. period because for you to miss out on that was was absolutely heartbreaking, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, to get that injury at that time, we were we were always going to be challenged to make it back in time. I think 
watching the boys win made me feel really good about my decision. Any athlete would want to be out there, but um, that I didn't try and be a bit of a hero and, and needle it and get out there and, and not really play the role that I'd want to, and which could have then cost us. I think it's I, I was so, so happy for the boys that they could go on and do it. And, yeah. um, you know, I think that's going to go down as one of the uh, club's proudest wins in a, in a long time. I, I saw a picture um, in the, the dressing room in Wembley. Were you in the home dressing room, by the way? Were you in the England dressing room? England football dressing room? So if you're going out, if you're looking to go out the tunnel, we were on the left. Okay. Yeah, you're in the England one. Yeah. So, yeah. but I don't know. So, I sort of picture. Everyone had their kits on. A couple of couple of topless guys still had shirts and uh, shorts and socks on. And then there was just Tom on the end doing a sort of an Ashley Cole uh, leaning on the end of the picture in a pair of uh, very very tight. Budgie. Well, almost like a G string. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, Josh Chimley is a very well connected um, individual. Mm. So. Each year we've got to Wembley, he gets us some Beats headphones and some Speedos. Right. So, oh. I think they're called Budgie Smugglers. I think you've got to plug them properly. Yeah, Budgie you? Smugglers, yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. That's the brand, oh, isn't it? Speedos Budgie is Smugglers. English, sorry. Yeah. Australian <laughs> terminology. So Budgie Smugglers, yeah. So um, he, he, he gets them in his, uh, his hotel room, lays them all out, invites all the lads, and you go and choose your pair. And obviously, I had to go for a larger size, 38-inch waist, and that, that was what was left. So I had them, and then obviously, uh, in the changing room after the game, you know, it was celebrations, morale was sky high, and ideally I should have put something on, but I got that, just the headphones on, maybe? Yeah, well, actually, the headphones are still in the box, ready to... Well, they, they, they didn't make it by Wembley. We got them... When no, got no, back. yeah, they came after, so, yeah. Oh, okay. He ordered them for Wembley, but they yeah. came Could after. You had have the headphones just covering your cock and balls. Oh, yeah, I know, yeah. Next time, even better, 2020. Even better photo, um, wouldn't it? Blake, something I just want to pick you up on quickly. You said that... Um, and we were talking to Jackson about this a little bit earlier, Jackson Hastings. He was saying that it's, um, it's a small in numbers sport in this country uh, and there's a real tradition. You're lucky to have a, a real good live product. Back home, we've got a really good TV product, but we've lost that feel and that tribalism about that game. It's something about the game. It's something that's alive and well here. Just elaborate on that for us. Is that something that, because I know that was what you said when you first moved over. You still think that's the, yeah, yeah, the case? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, my, my parents, have they just come over for Wembley and, and saw a game at Halliwell Jones as well. And they were super impressed with, um, as I said, the live product. Um, unfortunately, uh, we probably don't have the numbers in our game in this country that we deserve. Because, you know, being involved in rugby league, it's a wonderful sport. And... Um, deserves probably more credit than what it gets. I think we're great athletes. We, we play for 80 minutes and, um, you know, I think they say we're having six or seven mini car crashes a game, you know what I mean? I think mm. we deserve a bit more, but we are where we are. And um, the passion in this sport, it's, it's remarkable. I think, you know, players get songs from their, their fans. I think that's a really cool little thing that... I've still not had one in 12 years. Just so, really? Nothing. Have you got one? Yeah, I've got one. Um, Charlie's got one. We had our celebrations, and Charlie asked all our fans to sing his song. Actually, did he? <laughs> he got the front and he said, so "All right, everyone, sing my song." So and, it was like, and then it was a bit, a bit weird. But then they sung it, and then Denny Walker got oh, up. Oh god, this is the best. And after Wembley, like Denny, is, is it a Widner song? No, no, it's a twist Apparently and Widner shout. Apparently, Widner sing it. Yeah, I, saw I don't know. Saw that. Yeah, the so in the song. changing room, obviously, everyone's buzzing and just and want the challenge cup. Beers are flowing, it, and he and we were singing like the Warrington team song that you sing when you win, <laughs> and then he did. The twist and shout and everyone was loving it but he, he can he can actually get real deep into his voice and it sounds quite good without a microphone but he stood in front of 10,000 at Warrington Town Square After in their the celebrations parade. and he's grabbed the microphone and he goes does everybody <laughs> he's got Yo, proper does everybody strong know? Warrington accent <laughs> he goes does everyone know twist and shout and everyone's like uh, uh. and he's and <laughs> <laughs> so he performed it he on the stage. He sings the first verse and they're supposed to repeat yeah, it, but no but one knew no it. And they just all stood with stuck with thousands it. of people. But he stuck with it and done and the whole thing. Really and good and everyone, oh, honestly, so you just stood there behind him like, Danny, Danny, and he just performed. It was, did it he finish was, the whole on, song? He did the whole, I know, the two verses. Right. Oh, and he should have stopped after one. He could have stopped after one, but he kept going. Local news. Like yeah. Northwest tonight or whatever it's called. It was on that and everything and it was. To like, his credit oh it was it was class in the in the change rooms yeah. after Wembley, but not but sure. Everyone was teen, put your teen audience teen there yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. God. Yeah. Well my, look, one of my uh, crusades, I think we can call it Mark from now, is to if you get to the grand final, is to get Cynthia to Old Trafford. Well I said this about Wembley. I thought they were gonna you know It's a very serious week, ain't it? So like yeah, that's I what I mean. is not gonna it's a very serious weekend, but I could maybe you could sit next to or something. Or something yeah. yeah, I could bring her, take her to the, because I'm hosting on the pitch here, so we could get a, a seat somewhere. 
pop on, just have a that. And just have a sort of, you know, and then maybe if you, I don't know, if you score or if you win, you could come over and oh, so yeah, do that, something be, to Cynthia. Yeah. She'd love that. <laughs> yeah, She'd it? absolutely love that. <laughs> She'd need a ticket or an official yeah. pass or something, but I suppose. She, you'd, you'd love it. You'd love to have her here. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd and be she doesn't get out much by the sounds yeah. of it. Wembley, I thought that was going to be it. I thought they were going to, you know, I was going to see and that was the big surprise. But I mentioned it to Steve, you know, in the week said about it and he like laughed and I thought oh yeah he's not saying much because that's what they've got planned and then mm. she never turned up who would you least like to face in the grand final um, Saints I think no no I, I, they're my favourite team to play take Saints, Saints in I the final yeah playing Saints um, it's going to take three wins so for me yeah. whoever's there still whoever's left by the time that. we get there yeah they're all, they're all really good teams everyone who's left in obviously we can't think about the grand final because if we this this week it's all in Castleford <laughs> this week yeah but there's no one. Wigan have got obviously two. Whilst I've been here, they've got two wins on us there. They they we always seem to get the better of them in the the Challenge Cup and knock them out. And in the Grand Final, they seem to get us. But um, no, I love playing against Saints. Really? Salford, yeah, yeah, so, against yeah. they're the danger Anyone ones today. Like Salford yeah. this year, yeah, they've yeah, been they, that, that unknown quantity. Well, they, you know exactly what they do, but more of an unknown quantity when it comes to playoff structure. Yeah, well, um, they've been each time we've played them, we're just it's blown us away. It's got some really good tries. You know, an array of different tries as well. So they, they and they, they, they um, they're so fast. So they can score from anywhere. So yeah, we've struggled against Salford. Personally, you've struggled a bit against Salford. Yeah, well, yeah. The um, the, uh, <laughs> the Thursday after Wembley, Jesus Christ, that cool. was awful. Well, yeah, we that, obviously we've been tough. That. Yeah, played the Challenge Cup. Yeah. Um, Saturday, then you're on the beers all Saturday night, early hours out of the morning, couple of hours sleep. You get the bus back up to Warrington on the beers again. Uh, and then you go out that night, and you got Monday the day parade. And yeah, but they the beat us two times previously. The beers on the night, well. yeah. But so I'm just saying this wasn't so the, the only reason. This is the reason. So then you finish they, up they Tuesday morning. Right, I, I, I told these boys I, I would have been partying till Wednesday. If I so what I mean, so part. then we did a swim. You did team run. You, you honestly, it was going into that game. You would, you, you had nothing, and then yeah. first half it was a tight game, and then second half uh, I gave Ken Seo a hat trick. So. <laughs> We probably a, thought a game I'd like to forget. Gave Ken a hat trick. We thought more spit, boys I would be rested. I the bomb and he picked that up and then I tried making up for it by doing a grubber through. He caught it on the floor and went the length. It was that <laughs> point I was just close to going like that. Come on, <laughs> get me off, Steve. Um, any any little mad stories you can tell us from post post Challenge Cup? Um, Madder than Mad Monday. No, it wasn't, Mark, you were turned was, into a, what were you turned into after your grand final win? Do you know? Oh, do you know Mark won the grand final playing half back? Oh, did, oh Jack I Hughes, like a Jack Hughes. Yeah. I don't like talking about it. You know um, I, fell, I fell asleep in someone's kitchen like six in the morning after we'd won it. Oh, the old kitchen party. And then I just woke up with like eggs and protein powder and a coat hanger hanging from my face. So that was what you're alluding to. Yeah, it was. It? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, you've, you've, you've been there and you've won it. Forget it. I, I treat him like an idiot every week, but he's been there. He's got the T-shirt. But what's that like when you're walking out with those, when those fireworks go off here? At the... Yeah, well, these, these guys will know when you play in front of a big crowd and especially this stadium, the atmosphere is unbelievable and... Yeah, it's, it's, it's massive goosebumps. It's probably something you dream of as a kid. So, yeah, it's an amazing atmosphere and something, you know, it's why you play rugby league at the end of the day. Mm. And how nice is finally for you, Blake, would it be to have him miss the Challenge Cup final, to be walking out here at Old Trafford and to cap that first season in England with lifting this thing behind us? We've got to be careful. I didn't realise it was there. Look, Tom. Yeah, yeah. We... Trophy behind us. It'll be great. Obviously, everyone, Challenge Cups are, are obviously such a huge deal. I probably underestimated what what weight they carry in this country but um, all anyone wants to talk about is how long it's been since Warrington's won one of these ones so uh, to get the chance to to hopefully try and guide the boys to um, to a, you know a few wins in the in the final series but then a, a grand final winner be, uh, be a great way to top off a, uh, a season yeah well really appreciate you boys coming and have a chat with us I don't know um, what St Steve would do though because obviously in the last final he put Jack Hughes to half back and that worked so yeah, I mean we've got Jack Memo in the wings said. as well and <laughs> so he's um, suggesting that he could just be I don't, watching it, from Has anyone seen the highlight from this weekend when Tommy was uh, racing down Ooh. the wing and he, one, he chose to slide from seven metres out but the grass wasn't quite as wet as he thought it was Ow. Right, so I did this at Wembley. Like, I don't know if you remember in the uh, Challenge Cup against Catalan in the first half of the try to slide where I slid from a bike fire. It's the water the pitch. So when we went out for the warm up, but heading it, it was like it was really like we slid. I always do a slide in the warm up to see. It's ridiculous. No I've never seen any winger try. And it was yeah, so right. wet. And then 
come the second half, I got the ball and I, he was coming across. I thought, oh, I'll just slide from about five out, slid from about five out, <laughs> ended up about a, a foot short, <laughs> and he just slid in and knocked Knees me out. In the hip and he, so then oh, I, but then I jumped up, but then it, it got my ribs. So then he'd obviously <laughs> said I'm going to touch this lad to try, and then it looked like I was pretending to be injured as well after. So it was another bad moment. The big but, knees to be sliding on those, aren't yeah. they? Look at them. You learn from Ooh, these big things. Legs, yeah. Big legs, big boy, uh, big He's, personality. Tom, yeah, thanks very much. We, we started on the wrong foot, didn't we? But we got there. Oh, you, you, you that was on his behalf. Yeah, yours, mate. Don't feel bad. He did mug you off. He did mug you off. There's a mug right, Steve. It? He's done it again. <laughs> As, uh, as, as there we go, we finished with where it started with um, less of a strike from Steve Price, but a wave back to the Warrington yeah, coach. Yeah. Mark just walks out the doors to our right hand side. Will we see him back here in three, Who four knows? weeks' time? Who knows? Tom, Blake, thanks for speaking to us. All the best to Cynthia. Thanks for Speak us. soon. Thank you very much. Mr. Justin Holbrook. Manchester City fan. Throw that one out there straight away. I don't know whether that was supposed to be a secret or not, Mark, but we don't have secrets on this podcast, do nope. we? You're, you're a bit like me. You're going to catch fire in Old Trafford. You've got to be careful. <laughs> yes, well, um, while I'm a City fan, I'm, I'm very happy to play here if we're good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, we're going to miss you. You're going. You're leaving so soon. This beautiful relationship just started, didn't it? And Who between? Well, <laughs> me, Justin, John. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking I've been yeah. married a long time. I don't know where this is going. Here. <laughs> we haven't got Wilkin here today, unfortunately. Nah, He's uh, busy. very hard to track him down, Mark, yeah, very, isn't very, it? Very, very hard, yes. Very difficult to one, track one him down. One of your eight coffee shops he's in, is he? Pardon? Um, one of your eight coffee shops he's in. Yeah, somewhere? one of two. Yeah, he's, yeah. Um, he's quite aloof at times, so I have to leave him a few voicemails. He gets back to me a few days later. So. Quite aloof. I think you know about all, how aloof he, he is and was. He's a he? very busy man, is and uh, give him credit, he can still play great rugby league and have about 84 other interests, so he's <laughs> doing a good job. Did he turn up? Was it, punctuality was it ever a problem? Did he ever have to have Never, some word? Never. Always or terrific. Was he? Okay. No, on a serious note, terrific. Absolutely easy to coach and very professional and, and a guy that... I've said to him, so mentally tough, you know, obviously he won't mind me saying he's getting on in his years, but he, he still trains as hard as, as anyone. So, mm. um, Quite a weird uh, guy though, isn't he? Quite a weird, <laughs> no, I weird can't. chat. You, you guys know him better than me, <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave that stuff to you. <laughs> um, how are we feeling ahead of these playoffs that we're here for today at Old Trafford? Doing lots of interviews. Starts to build, doesn't it now, when you start talking about the playoffs? I mean, you guys have known that you'd be in this situation, obviously, because you're so far ahead. But the key now is just to having been in the same position last year to get to get to the line and across the line. So what, what do you what have you done differently? Yeah, look, I think a few things, but I think we've played differently this year. I think we've played with a lot more patience in our games that, that we didn't do last year. Um, and, and I think the finals format's a lot better now. It's a five-team semi, so you get a reward for finishing first with a week off. You're happy with that structure? It's a better structure oh, for you. Yeah, yeah. No, for us, we've... we've Played 33 weeks straight, so to get a week off is is great for us. Um, and you and deserve all, it, don't you? If, you, if you're that yeah, far ahead, yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah, I think you deserve some rewards for finishing first, and I think a week off and a home semi is enough rewards. I think then you've got to go out and earn it, and mm. um, and I'm okay with it. I think that's fair enough, and and also I think we've we've got some guys going into the finals now in, in a good spot, match fit. You know, we, we we didn't win the Challenge Cup, and we had. Four or five guys having their first game in five weeks, which made it hard, whereas now, and the key guys like James Roby, Alex Wormsley, Lachlan Coote, Morgan Knowles have all been able to play sort of four games in a row since then, and now we're hitting the finals in a really good spot. Mm. I guess that's the difference, isn't it? It's like last season, you know, you, you had that momentum, but then knowing you're in that position, inevitably to keep the, the mind ticking over during that, that period, it's, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? When you then suddenly come to knock out rugby. It must be so difficult to, to, to keep that focus at that stage. Yeah, I, th I think last year we, we just flew out of the blocks right at the start of the year and then tried to maintain it all year and it was mm. hard. Whereas this year, we've, we've, as I said, we've built as the season's gone on and, and the way we've played, we've been a lot more patient and, and not skipped too many stages and, and knowing the players can get to a certain level. We've just sort of, as I said, built up nicely and I feel we're in a, a really good spot um, to, to go further. But in the end... Uh, as much as you prepare and train and think you're all doing well, you've got to play well on the night and, mm. and, and all five teams are capable of that. So um, while we've finished 16 points clear and it's a, it's a great achievement, and, um, when it comes down to Friday week, whether we're playing Salford or Wigan, if we don't play well, we won't win. I know he's not going to say it, Mark, so I'll get you to say it for him. Mm. But how much does Justin deserve to go back to Australia with a Super League champions memory? Yeah, as much as any coach who's been over here. I, I mean, I was at Saints a few years ago now and after leaving, I always kept an eye on it at the club and how they played and 
how they're perceived by the media and the public. And I think when Justin came in, it, they were a low ebb. They, they, they lost to, to Castleford in the Challenge Cup a few years ago. And they just didn't seem a happy group. They weren't playing well. There wasn't much team spirit from what I could see. And I think for the rest of that season and the pre-season, they've just changed um, so much. And, you know, they've always had great players there. And I think just maybe a different, slightly different mindset and a different approach. And mm. Alex Wormsley alluded to it last week, just a happy environment. Um, has really helped them kick on and you know some of the players of who I've worked with in the past the likes of Percival and Lomax Makington have, have gone on to another level these last couple of seasons and you know Justin's got to take a lot of pre credit for that your ears must have been burning last week because we were talking a lot about you and with, with Wilkin and um, you know one of the things that John was saying is that you just made that 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 transition so seamless that uh, you know there, there could have been a, a huge transitional period at St Helens and, th and there just wasn't things were done and and John always talks about how you you as a coach and the best coaches make things simple something that Sir Alex Ferguson and everyone that played under Sir Alex Ferguson here at Old Trafford used to say that that you know it is a complex game in terms of if you if you overthink it but to simplify everything really helps those players yeah I'm not yeah I'm not sure it's just the, 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 the way I like to coach and I think it's um you got to keep things simple and you got to keep them clear for players and and you know the that, that's the key. Everyone's got to know their role, and if you start chopping and changing and adding too many things, because it's easy to do as a coach. You want to, you want to say, let's do this now, let's do that, and we'll outsmart the opposition. All that. You can get really cluttered with thoughts, and and you just got to keep coming back to. We've got to give you enough information that you need to win the game without mm. trying to cover everything. And it's a, the balance you've got to get right, and we, you know, we do that right most weeks. Luckily, I remember when we spoke. I think it was a couple of well, a year ago. So that you and Steve came into the studio. We did a BBC thing together, and you know you, you even said it. Your your words were you came here in terms of the the British eyes as a relative unknown. Yep. You're certainly not leaving as that, and leaving as a, a coach with huge, huge pedigree. Now, I mean, th this has been a great experience for you, hasn't it? Oh, it's, I've loved every minute of it since I got here. I've loved coaching here at St Helens, and. And I've loved the, the the Northern English people. They're, they're an absolute pleasure, and it's been a you know a great experience. I've loved it, and look, and it was hard. It's hard to be leaving. You know, I just think the only reason I'm leaving, and I've said it a number of times, is I do want to coach in the NRL, and that that's the only reason. It's nothing I'm unhappy about over here, and and even now that I know I'm going, I still sort of get a bit upset when I know how well the staff are and how well the players are that I'm actually not going to be here next year, and still sits awkwardly but I just think um, you know if I, if I knock back the opportunity to coach over there you never know with coaching you never know if you're going to get another chance and certain coaches you think oh they people say they're not going to be there and then they start winning games and they're there and you just you, it's always going to be the unknown if I if I knocked an opportunity back so um, that, that's the only reason I'm going but I love it over here. And it's, uh, a, it's a big job at Gold Coast as well because they've struggled this year haven't they? Yeah and, they've struggled yep. They've, um, they've got some great players and they've got a big infrastructure great stadium and it's probably see you Lee. Uh, it's probably one oh, of them that's probably me, a long long term job. It's not like a quick fix. It's, it's probably a lot of processes going to have to go into that. Yeah, look, I think as as you said, Flash. I think the the best thing is they've got a great nursery up there at the Gold Coast. You know, rugby league's the number one sport, so they've got all the right things happening, and they've got the front office in place. All that we just got to get the first team firing. And yeah, similar to when you came into Saints, then really. It is, um, it is similar position, absolutely, um, and they've got great players at the Gold Coast. The difference is, obviously, Saints have got a great history, whereas Gold Coast are a new club that are still trying to get their identity. So, it, it is a big challenge. But um, you know, it's one I'll look forward to next year. But you know, we've got the most exciting part of the year here now, and I'll, I'll enjoy this part. How difficult was it? I know you said it was hard, to, a hard decision to make, but did Saints make it very hard for you? How tempting was it to to actually stay when you were in that? Because you had to make a decision quite quickly, didn't you? Oh, uh, no, not really. No, I think. Saints were terrific. They, they made it clear they wanted me to stay and it, it was you know, tremendous from, from their behalf. And I just said, look, I love it here, but I want to see if an opportunity arises because I've got the, the itch to, to coach over there. And um, and then in the end, by the, the day I found out, everybody had found out anyway the same day. So people tend to think that you're known a lot earlier, but with social media, it's not the case. So I just said to my wife on the weekend before, Gold Coast said they make their decision. I said, look, I think if they offer it to me, I have to take it with the fact that if I don't, I'll always be 
regretting if I never get an opportunity. So that's, that's sort of the way it's come about. But um, yeah, it's a hard decision. It still is hard when, as I said, when I go to work every day, it's hard. But I've made it now and uh, I'll look forward to next year when it comes, but I'll enjoy this year. And how many of those Saints players do you think he's going to be stealing, Mark, and taking over to Australia? <laughs> I don't think Mike Rush and Emma McManus will uh, be too keen on that <laughs> happening, yeah. The, uh, the, the database that you, know, you need to hand in your, your, hey, your gun and your badge. Hey, Salford are flying, I might pinch a few of theirs. <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. I'll come to the Gold Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Mark yeah, can play for anyone. Coffee shop flash, we'll bring Will come over. Well, listen, great to speak to you, Justin. Um, what, a, what a way it would be for you to go out with a bang here wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be great. You know, no, no one would be happier than myself. I get that. Um, I, w I want to win it. But look, we've got to play well. If we do, I'll win it and I'll be happy. And if not, I'll um, shoot off and be uh, devastated. But I'll have to live with that as well. So all we can do is, you know, we've been good all year, but we've got to do it when it counts. And um, if we do that, we'll, we'll deserve it. And if we don't, we won't. Well, I want to see you walking out here in October in your Manchester City shirt. <laughs> That'd be a nice one, wouldn't it, for the front cover of the papers. Um, right. Best of luck. And um, we'll speak soon. Keep in touch. Cheers. I know John will be writing to you. John will be missing you, won't he? Well done, Your wingman. I hope so. He's hard to track down, but so <laughs> I'm not sure it'll be any easier when I'm over there. Top man, Justin. Thanks very much. Thank you. It's been good this, Mark, isn't it? It's good this, isn't it? It's been really good this, isn't it? Mm. We should hold hands for this last little bit. Um, we had fun? You had a fun day? Lots of fun, yep. Yeah. yeah. It was weird because I thought when, when they said that we were going to... You stopped holding my hand now. Uh, when, you, when they said, oh, we're going to do you know, a little podcast from... The Old playoffs, Trafford. media day. Yeah, I was thinking it's be weird because Mark's not going to be in the playoffs. So he's going to be talking about the. But would have been a bit embarrassing on my. When you walked but, in, they would have just thought, "Oh, he's here for the playoffs." Yeah, they wouldn't have thought like, "Why is well, this going?" Well, that's why I did it. That's why I've played so well. They've encouraged Salford these last few the weeks. Thought, media day. It'd be very embarrassing if I'm not involved. So I thought, I'll just turn it up a notch, and then yeah. lo and behold, finish third. Yeah. What do you, what do you make about the Cynthia story? It was nice, wasn't it? Tim Lyon, out, yeah, out of blue. I really enjoyed how yeah. weird he was. <laughs> and I think, again, like I turned it up these last few weeks for Salford, yeah. I think there's a few more levels on Tom Lynham's weirdness chart. Mm -hmm. So like I, I, think we, I think we should get him back on. We should get him in and peel him like an onion. Yeah. Just, peel just, those layers yeah, away. Yeah. Very strange, man. I like it. Um, well, look, mate, best of luck. Thank you. You've got a big game, haven't you? Big, big game, game, big against game against Wigan. Against Wigan. Uh, there's Adrian Lamb just walking up behind you. Should we yeah. just go out the door before? George Williams. Oh, that's George Williams. He was yeah. in front of George Williams. Yeah. Um, well, best of luck, mate. And yeah, thanks. we will speak again very soon. Don't forget to download week. the podcast next week. Next week, yeah. See you next week. week. See you next week. Uh, well, I'm up, See next I'm up in Manchester Monday. tonight. Are you going to take me out for a cheap date somewhere? Oh, yeah. We could do something, can oh, we? a great coffee shop. Oh, yeah, let's go and have a coffee. Um, right, download the podcast. As always, use the hashtag to get in touch out of your league mark it's available on apple itunes it's available on podbean on spotify wherever you get your podcast and we will be with you right up until the grand final after the grand final and then we will never be seen again ever <laughs> good night good night